It's Friday Feedback Friday Part 2! I'm not gonna do the whole song. You guys are watching both these videos somehow. Okay, so, like I said, I wanted to split up the videos into the first one about the education system and why it's not working for anyone. Um, but also uh, talk about Hogwarts Legacy. Because I had a lot of emotional conversations with people about this there's a lot of strong feelings here and if somebody's watching this video looking for a, a defense of jk rowling you're not going to get one um this is about this is about separating art from the artist um whatever financial gains or ip boost that she could get from somebody buying hogwarts legacy and whether it's fair to assume someone's politics um, based on buying the game. Is the mere purchase of Hogwarts Legacy transphobic? That's what we're doing here. Uh, J.K. Rowling is a duty face. That, oh God, even technically that can get me in trouble with YouTube. I disagree strongly with J.K. Rowling's views. <laughs> Help support this channel. Become a monthly pa patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for someone who can use it but can't afford it. Coffee.com slash Leanna K. Uh, okay, so. Three main arguments I've heard for the... You're transphobic if you buy Hogwarts Legacy. Uh, one, how can you look past J.K. Rowling's horrible comments about trans people? Um... And spare me the, show me where she said something transphobic. I'm sorry, when you're actively protesting the uh, simplification of the process of the gender recognition certificate on the basis that people who identify as trans women are actually just male predators... That is problematic at best. Um, and then, you know, her presumption of innocence comments, so on and so forth. People, people hand wave that away. People argue me with that. I'm sorry. She was so spun out about trans people. She actually said something as stupid as no group deserves blanket presumption of innocence. Why am I saying this is stupid? Because everyone deserves presumption of innocence all groups deserve presumption of innocence because everyone deserves presumption of innocence. It's presumption of innocence. Moving on. Um, I, I will not debate whether J.K. Rowling is, has said transphobic things. She has said transphobic things. Now, some people did not come to Harry Potter through the books. I have a very good friend who has never read the books, but she loves the movies. Um, I read the books initially, and so I connect the stories very, very strongly. And I do this with all media. It's not just J.K. Rowling. Um, and, um, I'm going to save my, my personal feelings about the game until the end. I'm going to go through the arguments first, because that's the way I roll. Logic first. Um... And, and so, you know, this idea that it's inseparable. Well, somebody who comes to it through the movies, not the books, a, a, a love of the books or a love of J.K. Rowling's writing is not why they do it. Um, you know, people can think James Cameron, for instance, is lousy to his ex-wives and has said some ridiculous ignorant things and still think the avatar movies are very enjoyable right now am i am i comparing what james cameron has said to what jk rowling has said no but you know he may have very much offended a lot of people um i i don't like uh, moving on um so i don't think you can argue that you must connect J.K. Rowling to the movies emotionally. I mean, obviously she's the creator of it, but you know, 
I've had to I've had this argument with people about um Roald Dahl's books because he was an anti-Semite. And am I opposed to anybody liking the witches or James the Giant Peach? Well, no. I mean, the James the Giant Peach stop action was a cool movie, right? Uh, am I going to tell somebody they can't see it because Roald Dahl was an anti-Semite? No, even though anti-Semitism is, uh, you know, the uh, the most common religiously driven type of hate crime. And it, so it's not harmless. And I celebrate Hanukkah, not Christmas. Um, you know, Orson Scott Card. Piece of crap. But some people don't follow this stuff as closely. And so they don't know. And again, this is a question of whether buying the game is inherently transphobic, whether it's fair to label someone a transphobe just because they want to play wizard in a video game. So the second argument that she makes money with every purchase. I have attempted to find out if that is fact. And the truth is no one knows. This is conjecture based on other deals she's done. And here's why you can't treat video games like profit participation in a movie or merchandising or anything like that. Video games, one, are a relatively low margin, meaning the amount of profit on each game is less than, um, you know, than on a movie ticket or a TV show or something like that. Mainly movies. Um, but and and a lot of a legacy media or linear media types do not understand video games so often what happens is there's a flat out licensing fee a lump sum right at the right at the top that the developer pays and then the you know the author makes their money right off the bat take as long as you want to bring it out um you know I don't care if it bombs. I don't care if it succeeds. Give me my money now. Um, you know, we know that that was the original deal on The Witcher. And it was a fairly low number. And so they, you know, went back and paid him some more uh, afterwards just for PR. But that that is more frequently how it works than royalties or residuals. Because... Uh, with royalties, it limits things like listing on streaming services like Game Pass and uh, and uh, PlayStation Plus, things like that. If she's got to be paid royalties on every purchase, they can't be on streaming services. That would be insane for a game like this. It doesn't mean they didn't do it, but, you know, balance of probabilities indicates that either it's a very small royalty plus a flat, flat fee or it's just a flat fee because royalties cut into the ability to sell the game on sales and streaming and a whole bunch of other reasons. So we can't say for certain that buying the game directly puts money in JK Rowling's pocket. It's possible, but it's more likely that she's already made her money. And so buying it, not buying it doesn't make a difference to her bottom line. Now that the final thing about it being a boost to an IP, it makes Harry Potter still seem popular. And, you know, there's an element that that supports her views in terms of, you know, her, her uh, fame or her relevance, right? I think that's the strongest of the arguments. I do. But does that mean it's necessarily strong enough to justify calling someone a transphobe just for buying the game? Well, let's examine that because, yes, J.K. Rowling is anti-trans. Daniel Radcliffe and Emma Watson are openly pro-trans uh a lot of the younger actors including the guy who played Dudley Dursley um openly defied JK Rowling and let's face it 
a lot of people associate, you know, Daniel Radcliffe, Emma Watson, Rupert Grint, so on and so forth, Eddie Redmayne, all down the line, more with Harry Potter than they do J.K. Rowling. So is the popularity of Potter uh, because of J.K. Rowling or is it because of a bunch of factors, predominantly the ongoing popularity of the movies and those actors? And the movies are still, they bounce around from streaming service to streaming service because they are things people will still watch both on television and on streaming services because of the popularity of the actors. Uh, Emma Watson is still the most popular female celebrity among uh, Gen Zers, which surprised the shit out of me. Um, so we can't say that for certain in terms of one-to-one. -one. And even if it were true, even if, you know, she gets a direct benefit to boost to IP does not make her any less transphobic and it does not make transphobia any more okay. It is just the question of how much people separate Harry Potter from her. And I know some die hard Harry Potter fans who are, it's not hers anymore. It's basically, it, it's reached the status of myth you know, the, the same way people say that Disney does not have the right to control Star Wars canon, the fans, it belongs to the fans, you have no right to take away Star Wars extended canon. There's, there's precedence for that. Am I saying that's what I believe? No. What I'm saying is it's a, a, an argument that can be a sincerely held belief from someone. So... Is J.K. Rowling transphobic? Yes. You know. Um, has she hurt a lot of people? Yes. Does that make it okay to call someone a transphobe just because they buy and play Hogwarts Legacy? I say no. I don't think two wrongs make a right here. I understand the emotional desire to make a very strong argument um, because anything that seems like she's winning causes a great deal of pain to people. And I, I, I feel that pain. If you've seen, I go hard on her on Twitter. I got dogpiled by her flying monkeys because I dared to challenge her on her commitment to free speech. Uh, she didn't like that. Um, but uh, this is a question of, first of all, does it track? No, people may not be aware of a lot of these things. They just like Harry Potter. They don't follow the drama. They don't read the news. They don't know. And some people have said, it's no excuse. You can't say that. If they don't know, it's not driving their opinions, right? It's just, it's not. Now, I know some people who do, are who are aware, who legitimately can't stand what J.K. Rowling has said, and they still like, Harry Potter's very important to me. I, as a kid, I dreamed of being able to be a wizard. This is my dream game. I really want to play it and I I am just not comfortable taking away anyone's happy um I tend to joke um I tend to tell them spoken like a true Hufflepuff I'm in Slytherin so and these things aren't real right the fact that we all know our freaking houses shows how much this has entered kind of the popular consciousness right um and uh, so there's that. But I also just think we're not winning any friends by accusing people of bigotry because they play a video game wherein you can actually play a, a transgender wizard. I know some people don't like saying transgender, but when I say trans something, people are like, what? It's transgender. There you go. I know it's trans is better, but 
clarity. Um, right now, not fucking up matters. Um, there are a lot of well-funded forces looking to make things miserable for trans people. And at least in a bunch of southern states and England proper, they're winning. Um, temporarily, I believe it's taking the same arc as the whole marriage equality fight in the 90s. But much like the marriage equality fight in the 90s where the people against progress looked at the dumbest things the craziest people said and tried to paint everybody with the same brush, they're doing that here. So they'll find the most radical of the radical trans activists who, you know, might, you know, do things that are, are not factual or they'll, they'll pull up people who are bad people who happen to be trans and use that as a, a disingenuous straw man argument to frighten people who don't know any actual trans people. And I've had people attempt this on me all the time. Look at what they said and look at what they did and look at what they said to me. And it's like, yeah, lady, um, you, th this is mild compared to the things TERFs have said to me. Two wrongs don't make a right. I don't judge everyone who doesn't quite understand the trans thing yet um, by the absolute worst, most virulent, horrible, hateful people. Because I've been through this before. Because I've been through this before, I know that you don't make any friends by telling someone they're a bad person and telling them what they think and what's in their heart because of a purchasing choice, you know, um, based on a lot of factors. You know, another example I can use is, you know, Kelsey Grammer is a really ignorant type of conservative. If somebody watches a Frasier rerun, does this mean they, they're MAGA? No. It's similar. Somebody may not even know. Somebody may know and just separate media from, from the creator. And some people can say, well, how can people do that? Because people just don't want to know. Because they want something that makes them temporarily happy because their lives are hard. And I'm saying this as somebody who knew about Joss Whedon for 10 years, had to sit through everybody saying he was a great feminist. And I tried to argue it on points and got shouted down. And I had to sit through those freaking character voiceless, mediocre Avengers films. And everybody said how great it was and sit there being subjected to hearing mewling quim in a pg-13 in a pg-13 film which i don't think is right it shouldn't be there it according to the letter of the mpaa that shouldn't that that shouldn't go on but it did and i wasn't you don't get anywhere when someone is so excited by the avengers Telling them that the director's a terrible person. They don't care at the moment. This is a validation of their childhood dream. And with the Joss Whedon thing, I I argued on points. You know, prima nocte joke. Really not. Like, really, kids? Really? Really? This is in, this is heroes saying this? Really? You can argue loose. Lose, lose. And then later on, years later, people are like, oh, yeah, he's a piece of garbage. Eventually, people came around to my way of thinking. That's the way it works. And you can't do that if you are so emotionally caught up that you burn bridges. And I say this as somebody who was really, really, really angry that that guy got away with it for over a decade. 
you know, there are some other people, but he's the one. It was just like, it's right there. Like his misogyny is right there in his work. There are numerous examples. People just wouldn't see it. And there are a lot of other issues with, you know, J.K. Rowling. She hand waves away the 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 issues with the Jewish stereotyping um, in Harry Potter, so on and so forth. So it's not just the trans thing, but people don't see it until they see it. And they're less likely to see it, not more likely to see it. If you make it an incredibly emotional thing and alienate people. Now, I bring up the Joss Whedon thing because I I relate to how upset it makes people. Yeah, it's going to be upsetting to hear that, you know, people are supporting the things that have made J.K. Rowling rich. There is an emotional reaction to that. And I know some people who are going to buy the game, who are going to donate um, the, um, the, the, uh, the equivalent of the purchase price to trans charities and things like that. That's how they're, you know, soothing their conscience. And cool, those charities get some money. Um, that's a, that's a, for me, that's a perfectly moral solution as somebody who's not going to buy or play the game. Me, personally. I can't separate it. Um, but eventually, because J.K. Rowling's going to keep going, and more and more people are, are saying, some, you know, something's not right with her. The alcohol probably isn't helping. But she'll step in it and eventually it'll be another Joss Whedon thing. And um, there's a bunch of developers who worked very hard on this game who I know don't share our views. Uh, there's a whole bunch of people other than her that made this what it is. And that's what a lot of people connect to. You know, the art direction and the performances and all that stuff. And it just doesn't do any good to call someone a transphobe because they play Hogwarts Legacy. Now, how do you express that it causes you pain to hear about this stuff? Because trust me, every fucking Avengers movie, I'm like, here we go. I get to hear about how brilliant and feminist Joss Whedon is. Grit my teeth. You should be able to say, I don't like it. Please don't talk to me about it. And have the people around you respect that. You know? A week or two, the hype will likely be over. Unless there is a huge fight over it like there was surrounding The Last of Us 2. That got really ugly. I'd like there to not be a repeat of that. But we'll see. Um, but people should, the people around you should care that something bothers you. So they don't play it around you. They don't talk about it around you, so on and so forth. Um, and if you do have, you know, a caring relationship with people, it goes both ways. You should know that someone who is your friend you know if you think someone's a transphobe why is that transphobe your friend and you shouldn't be attacking random people on the internet if they're not your friend anyway you don't know them so it's just diminishing returns to call someone you know a bigoted term because of a purchasing decision there's too many variables against it and it's ineffective now, that being said, I will continue to be critical of J.K. Rowling. I am not going to buy the game. Uh, I am not going to spend money on it. It probably wouldn't be my thing anyway. I didn't play any of the Lego games either. Um, and like I said, I think she's dead wrong. And 
I think she's spiteful and mean and possibly got a drinking problem and is mentally unstable. And no matter how the game does, good or bad, is not going to change that opinion I have. And I think it's better to focus on that and let people have their moments that make them happy. Because there are a lot of things that I think are great and other people just don't like. And I want to be able to have that. So I'm not going to freak out about stuff I don't like. Because I don't like it when people ruin the enjoyment I have for something by just not letting it go. And so I'm not going to do that to someone else. So I hope you found this video interesting and informative. Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for someone who can use it but can't afford it. Coffee.com slash Leanna K. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend.